Hey guys, King Bowser 6 here, right back with another video. In this one, I'm doing something slightly different. Rather than the full speed paint of my own creation, I did a study of the style of cute sexy robots and lighting via using a reference and stylizing it to the best of my ability. I hope you guys enjoyed this. In this video, I will be discussing anime dub versus anime sub, stars align, 2.43 sane high school boys volleyball team, and my ideas and stuff for future videos. As I have said many times before, whether it be on Twitter, Discord, or even on this channel, I massively prefer English dub over English sub. In fact, there are a bunch of anime that I have completely disregarded due to the fact that the episodes are only in English sub. Before I continue, I want to mention something that I forgot to talk about in the last video. I created an art poll for the future artwork that I'll be doing in a future video. The link will be in the description. So let me explain to you guys why I prefer English dub over English sub. In case you guys aren't aware, my primary and only fluent language is English. I've dabbled in Spanish a little bit, but English is the language that I understand the best, and that means I have a better understanding of the tone, implied messages, and other intricacies that are involved in speaking when it comes to English specifically. For foreign languages, I wouldn't be able to understand any of that because I wouldn't even know what someone is trying to communicate to me just with their words alone. And yes, English dub means subtitles, but English dub has subtitles, but it's not the same. It used to be more annoying reading the subtitles every time someone talked, but I've gotten used to it. It is still annoying when the subtitles go so fast that I can't read it fully. At those points, I have to go back and pause at that point to read what's going on. This is an overall annoyance that I don't have to deal with the English dub. There are times in which I can't quite hear what someone is trying to say in the English dub, and the English dub does sometimes allow me to figure out what a character is trying to say in a certain scene. So I've already addressed a few reasons why I prefer the dub over sub, but let me be more clear and list them out. I prefer the English dub because the emotion is superior, the voices themselves are more distinct, I don't have to read subtitles, I understand the nuances of the voices, and the speech is far better. With English dub initially, the voices all sounded mostly the same. One Piece and Boruto Naruto Next Generations are the only two ongoing anime that I have I am currently watching in English dub because the English dub episodes do not come out weekly. Given that One Piece is the greatest fictional work in existence, the English sub is still amazing I can clearly distinguish the voices of people like Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Nami, etc. In comparison to English dub, the emotion in English sub simply isn't anywhere nearly as strong. The little details within the performance of the voices themselves is something that I clearly can't pick up on because I don't understand a look of Japanese outside of the word NANI? I know there are plenty of English speakers who completely disagree with me and will claim that the opposite is true for the English sub, but that's just their take. We are all humans and we all have our own opinions on things. The way we experience life is different. With that in mind, I'm completely willing to discuss this further in the comments section or Twitter or my Discord server for those of you who would like to do so. I'll preface that this will be an overview of what goes on in the series without me giving away any kind of spoilers, as I have done in the last video. This series is a sports anime that focuses on a sport known as soft tennis, the difference between soft tennis and regular tennis being that the ball used is softer. I'm pretty sure that's the difference between baseball and softball. One of the things I enjoy about this series is how it tackles sensitive topics and issues that are present in our current society without being too overbearing about it. It doesn't shove them down your throat to the point where you get tired of hearing them. It's just one or two scenes within some of the episodes in which the issue is established and the characters talk about them in a civil and respectable way. I'll go over some of the topics, but I want to let those of you who are interested in the series see it for yourself. I'll just say that it's not the typical sorts of things you'd see in most other anime like the loss of a loved one, death, etc. Some of the more known things are in there, but it's not the main focus of the story or the main focus of any character individually. Speaking of this story, in comparison to other sports anime that I've seen, it's quite unique to say the least. Similar to A Hero No Sorrow, which this recommendation came off of from my anime list, the series splits its focus between the sport itself and the characters involved. To me, I'd say that Star's Line sort of splits off the focus in a different way. It seems like each episode starts out with one character's issues being established and then we see the character confront them or talk to his or her team about them. Despite the fact that there is a clear protagonist in Ma Maki Katsuragi, I'd say the focus is evenly split between everyone on the team. In a hero no Sora, I'd say more focus was put on Sora Kumitani, which isn't necessarily bad, but it's different. 
The way they do the focus on Star's line really makes it feel how the team as a whole are connecting through their life experiences in the game of soft tennis itself. Whatever their motivations, whatever their shortcomings, the team can come together and let it all out on the court. One thing I didn't like about the series with the, was the abrupt ending. You guys will see what I mean if you decide to check it out for yourselves. Overall, I'd give the series an 8.9 out of 10. For those of you who don't know, I find the ending of a series to be one of the most important aspects of a series. That's why I don't quite like Hunter x Hunter, because I feel the ending was absolutely atrocious. But that's a topic for another video. From what I found, Stars Align was supposed to be 24 episodes long, so I'm hoping the series will be continued, and if that happens, my rating will change and it will probably increase drastically. Yes, this is another volleyball anime like Haikyuu. There are some main differences, so let me go over how I feel about the series. I'll start off by saying that if you're looking for more story and depth, that Haikyuu definitely has the edge. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Haikyuu has way more episodes as of now, as it's two seasons, each have 24 episodes. The game against Shiratori Zara is like a separate season, which is 10 episodes, and then there's Haikyuu Over the Top, which is another 13 episodes, while 2.43 Satan High School Boys Volleyball Team, which I'll refer to as 2.43 for the rest of this section, has only 12 episodes in total. Even if I overlook that some of the elements in both series, specifically the beginning of the dynamics between some of the players are similar. Now that I think about it deeper, the two series do things very differently in terms of the build of the players and their individual strengths and weaknesses. I will say that 2.43 doesn't have enough focus on all of the players and it seems to focus on a core group of people, while with Haikyuu we can see developments and changes throughout each character on the Karasuno High School boys volleyball team. I will say there is more of a focus on the off-court relationships of some of the players in the same high school boys volleyball team of some of their own off-the-court things that they have to deal with. When it comes to that though, I would say that it applies more to the main duo of the show over anyone else. Okay, I think it's time to stop making the comparisons and start talking about 2.43 on its own. I believe that if the series is going to continue past the first season, it has a lot of potential to further flesh out a lot of the characters. I think that the animation studio definitely know what they're doing when it comes to mixing the sport itself and the outside activities as well as being able to shift the mood of the series at will, thereby keeping the audience on their toes in terms of what's going to happen next. The different types of players and their shortcomings are things that are in so well in how the team is able to work together as a whole. I hope there is a season 2 coming soon, but only time will sell. Overall, I'll give the series an 8.8 out of 10. My main criticism is that the focus between the different players, the main character, is on needs to be spread out more evenly, and as there are plenty of characters that get minimal to no attention whatsoever. As of now, I don't have a set plan for what I want to do for future videos outside of the poll that I plan on doing. I do have some ideas, so I'll go over them briefly. One thing I'm considering doing is more animations. In order to do so, I'd like to increase the speed at which I draw so that I'm not spending hours upon hours on just one individual frame of drawing. And keep in mind, I draw in 18 frames per second, so if I spent, let's say, one hour on one frame to completely finish one frame, it would take me 18 hours to create one second of animation. Obviously, with stick figure animations, this wouldn't be as much of an issue, and in fact, I have one still in the works. I've just been busy making these videos for you guys and doing other stuff to get further into this project. The second major thing I'm looking into and inspired, I've yeah, been inspired by, uh, is um, Ross Draw's Draw This In Your Style Challenge, or DTYS for short. As of last Friday, Ross Draws is hosting a Twitter and Instagram um, Draw This In Your Own Style Challenge. I have never done something like this, so this might be something that I choose to double into. Another thing that I'm thinking of is a simple redraw. I might either join the trend of a Dragon Ball redraw, get my own screenshot from this series and redraw something in the Dragon Ball Super Broly style, or getting a shot from a different anime and redrawing it in my own style. As of now, I'm working on replicating a different person's style, so I might do that as well. I've also been inspired by I'd love to draw manga to draw characters into string shots. I think there are other ideas that I have that I can't currently think of at the moment of making this video, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, check out my Twitter and Discord, both are in the description. If you want to know what I'm currently doing or thinking about, those two places are the best places to go. I will see you guys next time.